Twitter. Uh, and uh, I'll put a link uh, just in case you don't have it, but I think you should all have the agenda. Uh, if you want to speak, uh, please uh, raise your hand uh, and uh, we'll let you speak. Uh, for questions, you can either use um, Slido and uh, uh, it's, I'm putting in a chat. Uh, Slido called EOSC Hub Week, and you'll have to select uh, the name of uh, our session, EOSC Practical Skills, if you want to ask a question, um, or you can just use this chat if that's easier. Anything else I need to say? Yeah, I guess if, if, if you have some questions or issues, sir, uh, please ping uh, Rob, who is a host, uh, or me, if something doesn't work. And um, over to you, Natalia. Okay, thank you very much for joining this session. Uh, I would like to start by introducing, uh, saying a few words about the working group uh, on skills and training. So next slide, if you can, Rob. Um, the session, today's session is about, uh, for me, giving an introduction. Then we will be discussing, we will be touching upon three um, uh, uh, topics. So the EOSC skill set. So what are the skills we're talking uh, uh, for EOSC? Competence centers and how can we organize ourselves? And the digital skills in the national strategies, how to position EOSC in the broader agenda, because we know already that there's a lot going on on policy and strategy and digital skills. And then we can have an open discussion uh, throughout. Uh, Irina will guide us through this uh, um, discussion. Next slide. Okay, so this working group, we are a late uh, starter. We started uh, one year after the rest of the groups in January, 2020. We have currently 38 members from uh, 24 countries. We have a good representation from universities, data centers, so libraries, uh, ministries, uh, policy makers, infrastructure and service providers, but also from uh, people from education and learning. Um, what we found out very early on, and this was a nice surprise, is that we have members with a good experience in both data related issues, but also ICT issues. So we're trying to cover two aspects of uh, EOSCA data and services. Next slide. What is our objective? The objective of this training and skills is to see how we can provide a framework, and I know that this is a general term, for a sustainable training infrastructure for EOSC. So in this working uh, group, we are trying to find also our paths, and, but we have from early on um, um, uh, divided our work on two, on two things, on skills and competencies, and training capabilities. So what is needed and how we can go about it. Next slide. On one aspect is we are going over your organizational culture change and service development and uh, what are the key components for the skills development and what on the other aspect on the other front we're going over capabilities for trainers, research data stewards and service providers. So what are the key components for this training infrastructure? And in the middle, as you will see in this slide, we're talking about all the actors involved in this process. We're talking about institutions. We're talking about research support staff, researchers, policymakers, and EOS providers. Next slide. And in order to, um, oh, okay. Our timeline is, as we started in January 2020, uh, we will deliver the following in, in, uh, in fall and uh, end of, uh, end of uh, our uh, remit. So in, in the fall, we want to deliver a minimal skill set uh, for EOSC. Uh, and this uh, more or less a common is this minimum uh, viable product because we want to have a stage approach. We're talking about specific things like training catalogs in EOSC and specifications. And then uh, what we want, as I, I said before, is to have different options for organizational models for competence centers and how they can be coordinated. So as an input, uh, especially to the EOSC Association and the SRIA document. 
And also in, in the last quarter, we want to, what we want to do is you know, gather all this information and say, okay, how does this fit as a minimum viable product or a, you know, or a, a value added product, whatever uh, term we want to use for trading in the sustainability of EOSC. And uh, in parallel, the, the one of the, we will talk about it today is about recommendations for policymakers in a high level agenda at the national um, uh, level uh, and especially I think it would be uh, very much fitting um, in the new uh, European research era area uh, next slide so in order to do our work because you know there is we understand there is a lot of overlap in our discussions but we understand that we need to tackle it from different perspectives is we have four task forces uh, the first task force is on the we are discussing on this minimal skill set for EOSC uh, the second task force is, is discussing about uh, the options for organization models for competence centers the third is the national strategies and the fourth one is on the specifications for training catalog. Since February, we have studied work in the first three, and now uh, we will be starting a new task force uh, in, this, uh, in, in May and June on the specification of training catalogs. What I would like to say also is that we are not, uh, you know, what we're trying to do in this working group is to not start from scratch, is that we, we build on uh, existing initiatives, we have involved people in our uh, in our group from projects, so we are confident enough that we have all these um, all 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 the expertise that we need. Uh, next slide. So now I will give you know unless somebody has uh, some uh, burning questions, I will give uh, the, the the floor to Vincent to to present uh, what we have done in the minimal use skill set I think which is you know for the time being one of the most important outcomes of the group and uh, today uh, I would like also to stress that what we are presenting is that you know it's open it's, it's a consultation day so it's open for scrutiny it's open for your comments we're open for your comments we're open because we want to get it right as, as you know as soon as possible we don't have a lot of time uh, since we started late so Vansian Thank you, Natalia. Um, well, good afternoon all. Um, here you have the list of the um, uh, members of the Task Force One on the minimal EOSC skill sets. Um, next slide, please. And here is an outline of the objectives of this task force. So um, it's to establish a skills development framework. Um, the idea is that it would be set, it would be minimal skill sets for EOSC. So we are working in the global environment of open science, fair data management and so on. But this is specifically for EOSC, this is our focus. And as Natalia said earlier, we are targeting um, different communities, different uh, users. So you have the researchers, service providers, policymakers and also to a lesser extent let's say at uh, the beginning for the general public. Um, I'll get back to this um, in a minute. Um, next slide please. Okay so um, this task force, uh, the idea of the task force is to uh, first kind of map and identify uh, the target users in the ecosystem um, so that we are able to identify also the specific training needs. And um, this in, a, in a, a few slides, you will see what is the result of this. This is a diagram um, that uh, our colleague from the task force, Ignacio uh, Blanquer, uh, prepared. And it's been discussed already uh, <laughs> um, extensively let's say uh, but we would be very happy to have your views on on this so that is the first step let's say that v version one on this is ready and and um, open for discussion or further uh, consultation then we will have another uh, building block which is a mapping exercise of the existing skills and and competence frameworks again uh, natalia mentioned that already we do not want to 
start from scratch. We do not want to duplicate what is already there and it's already working well. But at the same time, we want to have a clear focus on the um, EOSC here. Then uh, once this mapping will be ready, the idea is then to identify and prioritize um, the open science and digital skill sets. Again, for this, those uh, target users within the EOSC um, ecosystem, there will be a study or there should be a study to frame digital skills. And a final uh, step that is still to, that will be addressed. We, we need to see if we will have time to do that and if it will be relevant to do it, is to discuss, uh, to discuss the certification of the skill set. And that has obvious links with um, the FAIR working group. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so um, very quickly, a tentative timeline for those steps, those building blocks from Task Force 1. Um, the diagram of the users it will be um, uh, at the next slides. I'm just checking myself, yeah. Um, so the version one is ready. Then uh, the mapping, uh, mapping situation by the end of June. And then from the mapping, um, the identification and prioritization right after the summer break, let's say. And then the study to frame skill sets. And then at the very end, we will have those deliverables that will that uh, Latalia mentioned, and um, possibly this discussion on the certification. Okay, uh, next slide, please. And then I will ask you to bear with me as I will try to guide you through this diagram. Um, so I decomposed the diagram in three steps so that you get the information step by step um, in order to yeah, easy. It. So step one, here you are. You see a mapping of the different target users uh, within the EOSC um, uh, ecosystem. And you see also um, the associated uh, roles. Um, they are grouped. You can see that um, you have a color code. Um, at the bottom, at the top uh, left, you see that the rings, the color rings, um, uh, green, purple, orange, and blue um, correspond to the um, communities of those uh, uh, users and the roles. And you can see that some of them actually with their roles, they, it, it's a mix of uh, different communities. Um, let me check if I don't forget. Oh yeah, so they are grouped uh, according to uh, or based on, on similar interactions with the ecosystem and then related assumed similar training needs um, and, uh, and uh, skills. Last thing that I wanted to say is that, well, there are two, <laughs> I'm, I'm checking my notes. Um, it's the researcher role is like, as you see, it's like more prominent at uh, the top of the, of the slide. It's because for the minimal uh, AOSC, we will first focus on researchers. So that should be clear. It does not mean that we will not be uh, addressing other roles uh, afterwards, but uh, at the first focus is on researchers. And the last on this, it's important also to mention that, of course, the transversal skills and the knowledge related to um, uh, digital uh, uh, skills, to open science, uh, the regulations uh, that is supposed or assumed to be like part of the package for any of those uh, roles. Okay, so I think that's it for this first step. So next slide, slide please. Okay, so uh, oh, one one less, please. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So thank you. Um, so now I added the outer um, ring, the outer circles. They are also colored. The color, the colors match the colors that you've seen at the upper um, uh, left uh, quarter. Um, they map to the, the areas of activities. And what is important here is that you can see that the boundaries between the different 
areas, um, they are flexible. So this is, this is what is represented with those um, kind of overlapping colors um, here. Um, next slide, please. And that will be step three. And in step three, what you can see is like, actually this is the diagram, the final di diagram, but I thought it would be better to guide you um, uh, step by step. Um, then you can see that the diagram is uh, mapped onto the key elements of the minimal viable EOS as presented um, in the Tinman um, uh, report from um, the sustainability working group. So you can see that you have like those, those elements that are the EOSC core, EOSC exchange, um, you have the federated data, and then there is an ID that a, a portion will be linked to ICT and some other um, proportion to the discipline. Um, I think that's about it. So I think that I can leave the floor to uh, Irina. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Wansien. Um, now I would like to ask you to go to Slido called uh, EOSC's Hub Week. And maybe, Rob, if you could go back to the diagram because we want to ask a couple of questions about uh, the di diagram. Thanks a lot. Uh, so if you go to slide uh, select uh, the name of our session, which is Date Use Practical, you should see a question. Do you like this diagram? And uh, I see four yes responses. Uh, Seven, thanks. Let's wait another minute. Um, yeah, so far we have yes, 11 yeses. And maybe let's, let's go to another question, um, which is uh, more important for us and you should see it now, what's missing? As once Yen said, it's still a work in progress uh, um, and uh, people who worked on this diagram also in, in this meeting now, so maybe they could add something more. Uh, if we miss something, uh, we're still discussing, so if you could let us know if you see immediately that uh, something is missing. Um, Please add. I don't see any additions yet, but I also understand that it's it's really hard to jump in and uh, comment on something that you are just seeing now, especially if it's uh, work in progress. And also, if uh, we cannot join Slido, mm -hmm. so, so if you have some is issues joining Slido, maybe just uh, type your answer here in the chat. Uh, yeah, like, like once Jan said. So if it's easier for you to to write in the chat, please use it. Or raise their hand to talk. Okay, I don't see any raised hands yet, so maybe we should continue with our second task force. And that's next slide, please, Rob. So our second task force uh, focuses on um, options for organizational models of competence centers and uh, their coordination. And uh, you can see our task force members on the screen. And uh, like I said, some of them are also here today. And next slide, please. Uh, we were thinking about uh, competence centers that uh, build competences and skills uh, of uh, professional groups that support researchers in stewardship of research outputs, EOSC service providers, trainers, and of course, researchers, uh, EOSC users, because like once Jan said, they are our main target audience. Um, and uh, 
we plan to release uh, this document uh, in quarter three, so probably towards the end of September, and uh, we'll pre-release pre a draft for consultations. And next slide, please. So we're looking at uh, training and skills elements in these competence centers, uh, and now we're doing a landscape analysis. So we're looking at the existing competence centers uh, and uh, the organizational models to see what works, what doesn't. And uh, we're looking into three types of uh, competence centers, those that are run by research infrastructures, national competence centers, and institutional competence centers. And our goal is to provide uh, research infrastructures, countries, institutions with uh, some suggestions how these competence centers could be more efficient, how they could be set up, uh, and uh, what's more important or what's, what's also important from our point of view is that we'd like to suggest some uh, coordination models uh, and here I would like to put emphasis on plural, that we're not talking about setting up a new competence center. We are talking, up, we're, we're talking about uh, setting up some coordination levels, maybe federation of competence centers uh, that would have uh, use compatibility as one of the elements uh, and uh, uh, they would be aligned in um, certain areas. So, and next slide, please. And here you see the diagram, which uh, once Yen already showed. And uh, what I added at the bottom are different uh, services or key functionalities that those competence centers could provide in order to build uh, skills uh, that you can see on the diagram. And next slide, please. Uh, these are more details about uh, services and uh, key functionalities uh, that uh, such competence centers could have. And uh, we adopted uh, this typology from uh, Ferris Fair deliverable report. Uh, so for example, uh, a competence center could provide uh, training as a service or maintain a catalog of training resources. Uh, and you can see some of uh, examples of um, organizations and uh, research infrastructures that have uh, such catalogs of training resources or provide uh, training services. Another service or another functionality that this competence center provides uh, uh, is actual data service uh, and again you can see some examples of uh, infrastructures and organizations that do that um, then um, guidance providing guiding resources advisory services and uh, you can see examples uh, uh, catalogs of resources, services, and policies is another area that the uh, competence center might uh, work in. And then uh, suggesting some standards. And again, you can see uh, some examples uh, on uh, the slide. Uh, and uh, we're not saying that the competence center should provide all these functionalities. So, uh, the competence center could just provide one or two or three of these functionalities. And it's also not a complete list yet, because like I said, we, we just started with this. Um, and um, that's when uh, I would like to, I would like you to go back, those who can, uh, to slider, please, if possible. And uh, I activated uh, the next question. And the next question is, uh, do you recognize this setup? So for example, if you already have a competence, competence center in your organization or in your research infrastructure, does this description somehow capture what you do? Okay, then I have a couple of no. 
I don't know, maybe uh, if someone said no, maybe you'd like to raise your hand and uh, comment. Why, why no? Okay, I don't see any raised hands yet. That's, that's good to know. So maybe, maybe you can add that uh, in a chat if, if you'd like. Or we'll have in a minute the next, next question, what's missing? We also have two questions here uh, mm -hmm. from, uh, from Yuri. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think this is, this is a more fundamental one. Mm -hmm. And then from Sana about the legal aspects of research data management in this scheme. Mm -hmm. So do, do you want to answer Yuri's question now? Yes, uh, I can answer Yuri. The, the way we understand digital skills is that uh, when we're talking about data intensive science, uh, there are different, uh, different skills that we need to employ at uh, whatever environment uh, this is. You know that the data science is is is, uh, is uh, taking place. So data stewardship, uh, data science, research engineering, um, ICT uh, competence, uh, but also leadership kind of competences are uh, are very uh, are very related. So what we don't want to do is we do not want to um, narrow ourselves in everything that is about you know data stewards and data scientists it's it's more than that uh, there are existing publications on digital skills because the work the the there are uh, discussions on on the on the high political level is about upskilling and it's about mainly digital skills so i will explain in, in the third task force how we're trying to tackle that um, but again, you know, we don't think that EOS should narrow down to uh, open and fair data. If I may quickly yes, jump in here as well, um, to, to add on what you just said, Natalia, um, uh, it was discussed also at some of our meetings that um, communication skills should be um, added as well. Um, communication within the, the system, uh, so with other uh, roles and other users of the system, but also like, let's say, towards the general public. So I think that this is also part of those general digital skills. Mm -hmm. and, there are, yeah, and there are existing frameworks uh, we can point to, yeah, we can point and we will put them in our reports. So, uh, Irina, about next question, yeah, Sana? Yeah. Well, uh, absolutely, Sana. Uh, legal aspects of research data management will fall, fall within this schema, because as you see, uh, what I showed are just high level types of services, and then we'll fill in uh, every, each one of these five functionalities with uh, more detailed services uh, and description of, of what kind of uh, skills and competencies in which areas uh, they are building? So, example that you showed is is absolutely yeah. That's that's one of the most important. Uh, yeah, and thanks a lot, Yuri, for providing more links in wider con context. We'll definitely get in touch with you. Then, uh, going back to our poll, so we have five yeses and five no to the question of recognizing this setup uh, well, that's that's a good starting point and uh, the next question that i would like you to answer if you already have such a competence center and if we ask you to describe briefly an organizational model would you be willing to do so yeah thanks and I'll, I'll, I'll put my email in the chat for contacts and I think we have at least one person who said yes. Um, and then maybe the next question. Uh, yeah, and thanks a lot, Richard. Uh, uh, the next question is uh, what's missing in our list of key functionalities. Uh,
Yeah, but maybe that's also a hard one if you just see this. Um, so maybe we could go back uh, rope to, to slides. Thanks. Uh, so our next steps are to actually finalize this typology of uh, key functionalities and services, uh, describe organizational models, um, see what already exists in um, Ferris Fair, Yosk Pilot and other deliverables, project deliverables, um, and uh, also reach out to some research infrastructures, some countries, uh, some organizations that have competence centers in place already. Um, and uh, we hope to have the first write-up sometime this summer, and then share it uh, maybe early September for comments and have a final version uh, in the end of September. I don't see any, any questions, just quick, yeah. No questions yet. So then uh, over to you, Natalia. Okay. Uh, before I go on to, to my to the to the third task force, I would like to answer a question from uh, from the beginning before you started the slide. The first question in the slide though was from Christine about uh, what is the what is the concept of uh, training catalog. So, um, you know, Christina and to the others, I think, you know, the catalog, the way we see it is that um, as with services and also as with data, uh, EOS will have uh, uh, rules of participation also on uh, training material. Uh, we understand that there will be uh, criteria on how to, uh, to what, what material and what is good and what is related to EOS. And we also understand that this is going to be a decentralized process. So many institutions, many RIs, many uh, players, actors will have their own training material. And uh, the catalog is a means in order to gather the material that is relevant to EOSC in a more, um, uh, with a, I wouldn't say certified, but I would say in a, with quality assurance um, uh, mechanisms. And this is where we see where where you see a NEOSC portal uh, as a centralized place that to access services. We understand that there are going to be many portals, many catalogs, many uh, entry points for training material. But at least this would mean uh, a way the catalog again. This would be a mechanism in order to make sure that this uh, criteria and quality assurance uh, is all over um, is the same. Okay. No, let, let us know if you need more uh, more um, uh, more explanations. So I will go now to the third task force, which is uh, um, and and then after after that I would like to ask you know uh, I will explain what we do. we will ask some questions and then we would like to have an open discussion. Okay, so the, t the third task force is about national digital skills strategies and where EOSC actually fits in. Because what we don't want to do is we don't want to see, you know, to, to, to see that EOSC and all our work is that it's in a bubble of its own. We need, you know, we know that research and uh, science, technology, innovation and social challenges and social uh, um, uh, mechanisms are well interconnected. So what we want to do is to see how this training is also EOSC training is part of a, a wider agenda. So you can see that the members of our group, uh, if you can go to the next slide. So the objective is here is to produce a high level strategic report on how skills uh, and in EOSC development and training fits in the wider national agenda. We are talking about training. Uh, I think we're talking about two different uh, things here. When, when a minister has in their, um, in their uh, mind uh, what is about uh, uh, digital skills, data skills, data intensive science, or data intensive uh, workflows is that the major thing is how to upskill the workforce. So how do we make a science workforce to be interoperable, if you want, with, with, other, uh, with, with other activities and developments in the countries? So the EOSC skills, what we have already said, it's about open, fair data and 
it means about data intensive science. So that means that we are looking also at services and ICT services. There is the EU digital skills agenda. Uh, and uh, our 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 uh, objective is to see where uh, EOSC fits into this. Uh, if you can press um, uh, next. So what we want to do is we want to develop the scope of for a study that we will commission to uh, some professionals to go around, you know, in in who who are more experts in domains other than EOS can research and make this connection. So our, uh, our as I will explain uh, further on, is in our timeline, now we are in the phase of developing the scope of the study, who we target and for what. Then we will commission a study and we will work uh, with, uh, with the winner of this, uh, of uh, whoever carries that, professional, uh, probably consulting company. But also, what we want to do on, on, in parallel, why we are uh, commission, why, why are, this study is, is, um, is, uh, pr uh, proceeds, is we want to deliver templates for the national strategies. Next slide. So, what, who is our target audience? So, so, our target audience is policymakers at all layers, ministries, academic institutions, how to include in education. Uh, educational curricula, research performing organizations, staff for competence centers, research funding and organizations, and of course, uh, the, the one of the first recipients should be the EOS Association and Partnership. Next slide. What we have found already is that there are other uh, in can you can, okay, there are other initiatives uh, going on. Uh, one is the strategy, the EC agenda on digital skills and job. This is an effort ongoing from uh, 2016. Then we have the pending um, uh, digital euro program. And then as implementation goes, we have a digital skills and job coalition, which brings together member states, companies, social partners, nonprofit organizations, and all these actors at the member state. Uh, what we have seen already by doing a very small um, and brief uh, landscape uh, report is that uh, one of the key, key gaps is that they're looking more on the digital skills as uh, we talked before with Yuri, everything except for data. So data science is kind of missing from this agenda. Next slide. So what are the key components of our study in our scoping? So first is the why. So what is the landscape and what are the possible connections uh, and gaps? So what are the skills needed in order to do this uh, uh, science uh, workflow, which is interoperable with, uh, with, with the other uh, digital workforce? Who are the actors involved in every country or in most countries? So what kind of ministries and how are they looking at it? how can we look at career perspectives and for the for the moment everyone is talking about career perspectives in EOSC as part of you know a single uh, career path but what would be interesting to see is what are the how are the um, these career paths can be intermingled with uh, between public sector and industry and research then what are the structures so for example competence centers is one structure that we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, achieve this. Uh, the next question that we want to address in this study is what are the costs and where what would be the potential funding? Then about learning environment we, because we're talking about training, we're talking about skills, but learning environments is uh, again something that is uh, this group usually uh, does not look into. I mean, and when I say this group, I mean EOSCA stakeholders. And then is about uh, coordination. So how can we coordinate all these efforts? Yuri, I see that you have raised your hand, but let me finish uh, and then I will give the, the floor to you, okay? Uh, next slide, please. So our timeline is that we are now, we have gathered some information of preliminary scope in order to, to see what's going on out there. And uh, we have sampled some countries. So what is the focus of these initiatives? Who are the actors involved? At which level, you know, uh, 
on a professional or educational level they are uh, moving, how is research included, data versus IT, and education versus lifelong training. So what we are now, we will be doing in the next few days, and maybe you can help us out with the questions that we have, is we want to outline the key components of this uh, study in order to commission it out by June 15. And then uh, in parallel, uh, we will be starting uh, the templates um, uh, for national strategies. So this is more or less uh, about, um, about, uh, uh, about uh, our timeline. Next slide. So next slide is about uh, the slide of questions. So Yuri, before Irina puts the questions up, can you, uh, can you, do you want to say? Uh... Uh, yes, I can uh, comment about uh, digital skills in the general. Uh, mm -hmm. and mentioning about Digital Skills Coalition for Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you made this uh, investigation. Uh, this is uh, a program that is, uh, uh, say, uh, member states level. Yes. So it goes only through uh, coordination of activities that are in member states. Mm -hmm. So it's very, I would not say, uh, bureaucratic, it's uh, quite formal. So, uh, I don't know if EOSC wants to uh, be engaged in such kind of uh, slow pro progressing and formal and uh, member states level decision uh, activity. Uh, but uh, actually there is also many, many, many activities related to the Digital Skills Coalition at the level where the uh, participation and contribution at the levels of expert projects initiative is possible. It's like send a, a project that do this digital skills, ICT skills and uh, okay, uh, I'm also occasionally participate in one project that develops a, a skills, digital skills for a maritime industry. Also working this, this what I mentioned in a chat, Digcom, uh, that uh, mentioned about data and digital skills. So Thank this you is kind very of, much. Yeah, yeah. Yes. For bringing this this up. So, so this is all useful and what we would like through the studies, because this is what we did ourselves in sampling some countries, is that we see that there's a lot going on around digital skills. But again, as you know, uh, it's the usual story in Europe, everything is siloed because maybe it comes from another DG or it comes from other people. So what our challenge here is to do is to say, where does EOSC fit into this? We don't expect that EOSC, no, we expect some study that will say, here is what EOSC, here is what research, you know, the research endeavor uh, has, you know, more requirements, less requirements or different requirements. And what we would like to see is to make this connection. So when, we're talking about national strategies on digital skills and training. EOSC has its own corner, you know, and hopefully not separated from the others. Yes, I mean, yes, Matthew, uh, I think this is, you no, know, we, we are, we will be approaching it on two on two levels, one, all of the task forces. One is through education and education curricula for researchers, but also the second is uh, through lifelong learning and how to do these uh, professionals, these, uh, these uh, research data or ICT or whatever use professionals in order to have a good career paths, okay? Any other question before we go? But thank you, Yuri. I mean, and this uh, DigiComp uh, framework was uh, very much uh, mentioned in the latest OECD report. And uh, the OECD people, you know, participate in our groups, uh, telling us, you know, bringing this into our attention and telling us, you know, what are the, the differences and what are the, the pros and cons. Uh, Natalia, can I add yes, a please. couple of words? Uh, Actually, what I notice, uh, OECD uh, starting uh, uh, like promoting or making study on science digitalization. 
And this is uh, why the scope and indeed where is a digicomp, uh, digicomp and digital skills are uh, connected in a broader way. Mm -hmm. And they have quite interesting uh, kind of results that may give us hint what to develop and which direction to look. Science digitalization. Yes, so there, there is this, uh, the, this, this report and also one, one upcoming, you know, I'm coming now to be published in the summer uh, 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 about uh, science uh, 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 as an enterprise and training in science. So what we, you know, what the group and what the, the study will do is to is make sure that all of these things taken into account is to make the subtle, uh, you know, um, ways and views and lenses where we see training on digital skills and hopefully this is uh, this is uh, this is uh, this is going to be um, uh, something that at the end of the year we're going to have a more clear pictures in our mind because what we think is important is that you know we need to approach our uh, our policy makers at the national level and people need to understand that you know data is data uh, ICT is ICT uh, EOSC is a part of a whole picture and also for the workforce what what is important in order to make sure that we have this career path ways in EOS is that they're not in silo people can move from one sector to the other from industry to research to research to public sector and you know they need to have this as, as a holistic approach this is i think this is this is how we, we have why we have started this task force so um can we go go to the questions uh Irina? Do you see Andres' question, Natalia? Ah, okay, sorry. Training services intended to be implemented at EOS Core. Andrea, is this going, is this related to the competence center? So, to, you know, maybe you want to, uh, to better uh, to clarify the question because I'm not sure I understand it. Yeah, so. Um Good morning. Uh, my my question is related to whether when these uh, training services will be it will be available to users. So it will be built on top of uh, the current use core and use marketplace, um, or it will be part of uh, the EOS core or or EOS marketplace. Uh, um, May yeah. I say something, Andrea and Vincent sure. and, and, and Irina can, can tell us uh, better. We're not so much uh, involved in the specific of EOS core or marketplace. The, the, first, uh, the first and second uh, task forces, they take this into account in order to see what are the digital skills and what are the organizational models. We're, we're looking into a more decentralized and more holistic and more distributed approach so uh i'm not sure what it means to have you know the training services on the eos marketplace it means for us that if somebody wants to advertise their services learning catalogs or you know training service uh, personnel or whatever they want to put out there um it, they would have to abide to the rules of participation of eos but what the work that we are doing is what we're trying to do on the first task force is to better classify these you know these people in the roles so maybe we can have you know the, 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 the a better a better tagging if you want uh, for the for the eos marketplace and the second is about because we know eos is a, is a decentralized place how can we you know foster competence centers or whatever we want to call them is that uh, people think you know when when they set this up they can feel aligned to EOS? I mean, Irina or Bansian? Oh, I think you covered that well. Okay, thank you. I I was just wondering, in fact, if it was already known uh, in which strategy EOSC strategy is going to be implemented. Thank you. <laughs> We will know. <laughs> you know in the next one or two years we will know okay and rob will show our current um, 
the slide a question and thanks a lot to those who already responded. So you see the okay. current, yeah, over to you, Natalia. Okay, so difficult, it is difficult. <laughs> may, may, may I say something? Because even thinking about it is we're trying to see where is the clarity and you know, what is very hard is that in each member state or associate, European country or associate country is that things are done differently, they are approached differently, right? So where do you have, you know, where, where is this national, you know, national agenda? Our, our aim is not to put EOSC from, from the beginning in the national agenda. We don't, you know, you know we don't have such aspirations is that what we want to is by the end of the year to have a report, a very high level report that will make the connections. And given this report, then, you know, the EOSC Association, the partnership, uh, the commission, the whoever, they can start, you know, elaborating and implementing that. Okay, alignment is needed in coming years. Yes, but this is not possible. It is essential, I would say. Uh, alignments on what? There are different, uh, you know, um, there are different types of alignment, as well, alignment strategies. It is essential. And may I say also, because, you know, uh, yesterday I was looking into the questions of uh, the European Commission about the uh, new European research area. I think these kinds of discussions should be a, a priority you know digital skills and upskilling and uh, embedding work uh, workforces in my opinion you know we should make an effort as as representatives of the community to put it as a, as a key priority in era so now national strategies depend on a large number of communities at various level okay open science the hardest part is maybe bringing everyone to speak oh, yes <laughs> yes Okay, and then Michelle. Okay, in July. Okay, maybe Michelle, maybe you want to say something about it, and maybe especially the difference between what you said about the digital science. What is the, the, the what is the the difference between these two reports? Hi, I'm sorry, maybe my video is not working at the moment. Uh, yeah, it's Michelle Barker here. I was the chair of the expert group that ran the OECD Global Science Forum, a work that uh, Natalia's referenced a little bit. Uh, so we have a report coming out in July and I've just put in the chat, if you're interested in knowing a bit more, then contact me. I work at a different focus uh, to uh, the EOS work in that we aim to make recommendations uh, to policymakers uh, in government. That's the primary aim of the OECD is to enhance, enhance the work of governments in achieving their outcomes. Uh, but within the work, we also make recommendations uh, to a range of other stakeholders like universities and research infrastructures, uh, libraries, uh, research funders. Uh, and so the work was really looking at how, how uh, digital skills can be developed within a, a national system, acknowledging that there's a whole range of different players, that there's different skills needed, that there's different models for enabling training, uh, and there's additional complexities such as how do we enable career paths and, and appropriate incentives for newly emerging roles. Uh, so there's certainly uh, a, a large amount of crossover between that work, but EOSC is looking much more concretely at how to solve some of these issues uh, in the shorter term and how to set up some viable structures. So it's fantastic that uh, we're able to contribute and ensure that the pieces of work continue to build on each other. Thanks, Natalia. Thank you, Michelle. I think you know, the, the OECD report is a great, uh, uh, is great work. We understand that you know, it tries to, um, to well, to find a common ground uh, before be, between different uh, perspectives all over the world, and this is where you know our job in EOS is to, to come in and say you know what we actually want. So um, okay, so Ellen says it's a pity, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a shame that uh, Slido doesn't work for many people. Please, you know, we don't. Uh, how how much time do we have, Irina? Uh, we have two more minutes. Would somebody raise, you know, their hands? You know, you know what, what you want to uh, research methods training. 
Okay, good. Uh, great. I think when you say research, uh, the, 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 the person who said research methods training is maybe because it's a, it's a, it's a terminology issue is that it, is this what I call, you know, more innovative uh, learning environments? Uh, Natalia, this is, was me, uh, Yuri. Uh, Yuri, okay. Yes, we uh, realized uh, from no long time ago, from still Edison time, that uh, research methods are a growing acceptance not only ah, in okay. on only in science area in data science, but also in industry. So they are stri and also digital skills has elements what can be treated as a research methods, but. Uh, and developing uh, understanding what how to research how to state a problem it's a also a big difference uh, even between different countries okay. for example in europe typically students are uh, well prepared to do the research in countries eastern countries they don't have even such kind of notion what is research method and how to st start uh, how to set up problem solving from the beginning to the end so this means research method. And another story that research methods are well developed in non-computer science, but less developed in computer science and data science. So this means okay. that there is something to do. Maybe, maybe Yuri, what you can say is if, if, if you can possibly send me an email of a small um, paragraph, okay to say what exactly you mean because I would like you know probably to put that as you know what is the uh, you know the additional requirements of research versus the other digital skills uh, areas areas of digital skills would you okay, do that I'll do. I'll do. thank you very much okay uh, how does this work relate to the work uh, uh, Anders okay uh, can I say that you know, it should relate and we have not even um, uh, contacted your HPC and I think this should be on our agenda. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so this is, this is, this is, you know, Irina, we should take that into account. So I think because Irina, maybe, maybe I, you know, the questions probably is, uh, you know, uh, I like the discussion more than the questions. Can I say that, you know, what we're doing, um, one of the most important things now for the, for, for the outputs is what Van Sien uh, showed. Because this will guide a lot of our thinking in the next uh, rounds. So, would it be possible, you know, Vincent, how would people, how could people give uh, input uh, to this document offline? Oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, the idea was now to have a, um, the version that I presented is supposed to be V1. Um, and it was mentioned that we would consult. I don't know how we will do that in order not to uh, to have too much. So maybe the best would be to get in touch with um, me, maybe Ignacio. I don't know if Ignacio is there. Uh, let me check. Ignacio is there. Um, Ignacio, do, do you, yeah, you're here. Do you mind sending your email address? I will do the same. And what we could also do, we could publish this as a blog uh, yeah. on our working group page uh, and add uh, an email for contacts there. Yeah, that, that would be very good. So I will type my, my address um, and we will follow up on uh, the, one, the people who, who would be interested. We will get back to them. I think that's okay. Thanks a lot. We are past one hour now. I think for us, definitely, that was a very useful uh, session. I hope you also got something out of it. Uh, and uh, we're just starting, so we'll be in touch with you with more requests for comments and feedback. Last chance to ask. Any questions you wanted to ask? 
apologies for the slide room. Thanks a lot. Then I guess Thank we you, everyone. will have a break now and then uh, there will be a new sessions according to the schedule. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Enjoy your lunch. Bye. Bye. Bye.